Next, I want to talk about a much better experience that I had, um, and that is with the Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot Guidebook. Um, so this is a deck by Paul Hewson. I'll just lay out a few cards for you to look at. Uh, he uses a significator card, uh, which you don't have to use, but he includes one in the deck, which I like because if you use this card, if you want to use a significator, you can use this card and then you're not giving up your significator card as part of the reading. So whatever you would have used as a significator can still appear in the reading and give you some information. So that's kind of cool. But this deck is really interesting because it combines, uh, and here's some good examples, it combines some historic uh, figures from the majors, for the majors, some historic decks, and just redraws them. And then for the minor cards, he's based all of his interpretations on Atea's keywords. And Atea, just to refresh your memory, was an 18th century writer, esoteric writer on, on tarot. He was one of the first to publish a sort of guidebook on how to read tarot for fortune telling. And his keywords and things heavily influenced the Golden Dawn. So um, he's an interesting figure. Now, that said, I will say his keywords and interpretations can be a little bit odd. Like, he assigns certain minor cards are like brunette woman or blonde woman or something like that. So it's a little bit weird to think of that as the jumping off point for the interpretation because, of course, you're then assigning certain characteristics or values to all brunette women or all blonde women or, or having them stand in as a symbol. And that can be a bit fraught. But Paul Hewson makes it very clear that that's what he's doing here. So, and he, I think he stretches those interpretations in such a way that they're a bit more usable for the modern era. So this book will not be for everyone. I, I recognize that. But it's an interesting way for me, at least, to get into this historic esoteric way of thinking about tarot cards and understanding a lot more about where the golden dawn got their interpretations because again they kind of plagiarized from atea um it's funny because a.e weight like slams atea in his writing and yet if you look at his deck and his imagery it's very much based on atea's keywords a lot of the time but i like i like this book this is so this is the bigger guidebook the deck itself does come with like a pamphlet version but this is the longer guidebook and um, Paul Hewson is very good about, you know, telling you some, again, no bullshit tarot history. And then he tells you where each of the cards comes from. So again, in the majors, he's pulling from different historic decks and he tells you which ones um, he's using as the guide images for his own, own deck. And then for the minors, he gives you just a, a blurb and then some keywords uprights and reversed. This is another book that I could recommend if you're kind of looking to expand or maybe get a different flavor on certain cards or if you just want to mix it up. Um, the Six of Coins was particularly interesting because, as he points out here, many mar modern cardomancers interpret this card as present, as a present, as in a gift. So if we think about the Rider Waite image, right, you have a rich person who is handing pennies out to, to poor people who are dressed in rags, like crouched at his feet. So it's here, I'm giving you a gift, right? But in actual fact, the original divinatory interpretation, according to Atea, was the present moment, as in right now. It may warn of a perilous situation that may improve or worsen depending on its neighboring cards. So, you know, that's interesting. Like a present, the present, um, how are you interpreting this? And he suggests for the upright cards, it could mean actually, immediately, now, or on the spot, suddenly, instantly, at this moment, today, or it could refer to an assistant, a witness, a contemporary, someone who is attentive, caring, or vigilant. And then for reversed uh, uh, suggestions, he has desire, wish, zeal, or passion. So feeling like feeling urgent or, you know, being impatient, that kind of thing. Pursuit, longing, overreaching ambition and greed, which I think sits nicely with imagery from other decks as well. Like those those interpretations also sit well with the, the Golden Dawn decks, for example. So I really appreciated this book. I think it's it's a cool one. If the imagery appeals to you, I would suggest getting this uh, larger book as well to kind of go with it and explain more behind what the imagery is. And this is, uh, you know, still in print. 
published by Los Scarabeo, so in, the, in North America you can get this through Llewellyn Books. Um, Kristen Louise says she's, she likes the Significator card. Yeah, I think this is also based on Atea, and it's got the signs of the zodiac. I don't have my magic uh, chopsticks, so I'll use my magic pen today. Um, but it has the signs of the zodiac. You can see them all here on the figure's um, form over top. And what I like is that um, a lot of their body is covered up, and so this uh, figure itself could represent anyone of any gender expression, I think. So yeah, this is a cool... It's a cool deck and I'm, I'm looking forward to doing more readings with it um, now that I've kind of gone through the guidebook and understand a little bit more about what Paul Hewson was drawing from and his sources. Um, I want to take it out for some test reads and I, I might do some um, some test reads on the channel as, as other videos. Um, Aquamarine18 says she likes the idea of a separate significator so you don't have to take one out of the deck to have one. Yeah, I agree. Um, sometimes if I'm doing a significator I'll pull one from a different pack just so again I can have all 78 in the reading itself. I don't usually do significators unless the spread kind of calls for that. Some spreads are like, you know, find the find the significator and then read the four cards behind and the four cards in front of it or something after you've shuffled. Um, but this is, a, this is a cool way to do it. Uh, Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot, Pictorial Key by Paul Hewson. And uh, I can recommend it as just another, you know, interesting um, source for additional thoughts, additional ideas. 